All right, so it's been a while. We're in the shop, it's late at night. Everyone's gone home, the phone stopped ringing. It's my favorite time of day. You can see it's pitch black out there. And it's raining and cold, the winter is here. It is November. And what do you know, what do you see here? What do you, what's on my garage floor? Well, let's take a little tour, shall we? Looks like a Volkswagen engine, and it is. It's an old buggy engine that I took in on trade, and I don't know much about it. The owner didn't know much about it. Let's go through a few things though. Once I kind of dug into it a little bit, I realized this might be something. So, I don't know if you're familiar with Volkswagens or not, but uh, it does have an alternator, has an aluminum pulley on the front, a 009 distributor that's chrome, but a little further uh, kind of digging, you can see there's finned center mount valve covers, which are kind of cool, and huge carburetors. These are 48s, 48s, IDFs, Weber's, real ones. Uh, pretty amazing. I didn't think you could put that on a, I think it's a 1776 is what the size of the engine is. It has a tremendous amount of compression. I haven't measured the compression, but just from trying to turn it over, I can tell I had to hook up a stronger battery. The rig or the setup I've got here is I've got an old six volt tranny that I hogged out the bell housing so I can get the, the 12 volt flywheel to fit. Maybe somebody can tell me what's missing here. There's just nothing in there but the spider gears. I'm missing the flanges. I'm not a Volkswagen guy, so I don't really know what's up with that. Anyhow, uh, I've had this for a while and I just didn't know if it was even worth fixing. It kind of came in pieces. The carburetors were in a box. The alternator was in a box. It was kind of a mess. Uh, it hasn't been treated very well. And you can see it's, I don't want to say it's janky, but the oil cooler is in front of the fan intake. That's not the, the greatest setup. But I was told it was good, and uh, I was going to put it in my little Vespa car that's Volkswagen powered. However, the carburetors, because they're dual carburetors, they stick out and I'd have to cut the bodywork. Um, that's not going to be good. So right now I have the center carburetor and I'm just going to leave that for now. It's running really good. This actually might be too much uh, with the higher compression, the bigger carburetors, and I'm not sure the cam. We're going to try to fire it up. Uh, it's got oil pressure. I tried to turn it over with starting fluid and it sputtered a little bit. Now I've got some gas in the carburetors and if I work the throttle linkage, you look down there, you can see it shoots a little gas. In fact, this carburetor is overflowing a little bit. That's going to create a stink. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put you on a tripod and you can watch, see what happens. Hopefully I don't burn my kneecaps off with flames or something. Okay. Okay, here we go. I got my earmuffs here because we have open exhaust and I'm not stupid. <laughs> or maybe I am, trying to start an inch on the ground. So we're going to see how this works. Put my earmuffs on, give a little oil power there. So my coil wire, which was hooked to the coil here, got sucked into the fan and pretty much shut the engine off. Well, I know she runs. Sounds like she runs pretty good. As far as the integrity goes, there's no knocks, no clanks, no weird noises. It probably needs some carburetor tuning. Now I just got to find a car to put it in. Anybody know of a car I could put this in? <laughs> Thanks for watching me start up this old uh, 1776 with dual carburetors.